Welcome to the lecture on batting cleanup and striking out. Now, this reading is a little bit um, very different writing style with Dave Barry versus Suzanne Britt Jordan. D Dave Barry is known for writing columns um, and pieces that are they're comical in a way, and they're kind of sarcastic sometimes, but he usually deals with real life kind of situations, all right? So in this essay, um, he talks about differences between men and women. So our first subject is men, and our second subject is women. Not necessarily in that order, but just um, for that purpose. And this one tends to be more of a um, alternating format, that point by point, right? Now, he starts off very simply, the primary difference between men and women is that women can see extremely small quantities of dirt, not when they're babies, of course. Babies of both sexes have a very low awareness of dirt, other than to think it tastes better with food. Now, we don't get our thesis statement in that first paragraph. It's going to be that second paragraph before he establishes his big point that he'll be making in this, um, in this essay. Um, he talks in that second paragraph about um, somewhere during the growing process, there's a hormonal secretion that takes place that makes women able to see um, dirt, whereas men don't really see that. They don't, and there, there are actually scientific studies that have been done, and the data supports the idea that a woman can walk into a room and see everything that's out of place, everything that is wrong. Um, whereas a man can walk in the room and step over, like, even, you know, a, a pair of shoes and not see that detail that women are, are just kind of geared to key into little details that are out of place or that are wrong versus men. Um, it's also been proven that women can multitask much better than men can. So, a lot of what he's saying is not just funny and not just based on his own observations, but we actually know some of these things to be true, which makes it even more funny, okay? So, he's going to, obviously, he is the man in this scenario, and he represents all men, right? Um, and then his wife is the woman who represents all women. So we end up with what looks like a thesis statement at the end of that second paragraph. This is one major historical reason why to this very day, men tend to do extremely little in the way of useful housework. So his thesis, what he's going to prove, um, and guys, you're going to love this maybe, um, I know my husband would, is that um, it's, it's not our fault, men, it, that we do extremely little in the way of housework. It's just that we don't notice that things are wrong, okay? That there is a biological reason, this special hormonal secretion, which I've never heard of that before, but whatever. Um, but that becomes his thesis, right? It, it becomes his rationale for why men don't do an extremely lot in the way of housework because they don't see it. All right, so this one really is, and I didn't note that at the top of this document. Sorry about that. Um, but this one really does appear to be that that point by point method, that alternating method. Um, we've got, for example, points like cleaning, and we've got points like sports. Okay, and so. In the process, I mean, we're not going to have him saying men this, women this, men this, women this, but it's implied. And he, he implies that through the examples in his own life, right? You got that cool example when it comes to cleaning of his wife wants him to clean the bathroom because it's filthy. And, you know, he goes in there with his, you know, Windex and he thinks he cleans the bathroom. And then she steps in and she can't even tell that he's done anything. So, um, through the examples, the real life kind of examples, 
he is showing that that alternating between the male perspective and the female perspective in reference to that one point cleaning okay sports okay is another point and i guess i you know don't fall into the stereotype when it comes to sports because I personally love baseball. I love the Astros. I've loved them long before it was popular to love them. So I can guarantee you every afternoon I'm going to be watching, you know, baseball if it's on, especially playoff season. I will work everything around that. Um, I gained that love of baseball and the Astros from my father. And in fact, the year that he died is the year they went to the World Series. So um, that has a special place for me. In fact, my son and I, um, for his 21st birthday, I took him to spring training camp this past spring, and of course, we made it through halfway, and 2020 hit, and everything shut down, including spring training, so um, just to tell you that I'm not the typical woman that maybe doesn't like sports. I do like some sports a lot. All right, so in the sports section, he is talking about how you know, sometimes women don't even know sports is on. In fact, he gave that example of one of the their friends, um, couple friends invited, the woman invited several couples over on World Series, one of the nights of the World Series. And, you know, the guys are sitting there, they can't believe that, you know, the World Series is on and they're not watching it. Well, that would have been me too. I would have had to say, no, thank you, I can't go. Um, but anyway, so again, you've got the, the alternating back and forth with the use of examples, right, to show those, the contrast between men and women. Now, the guys are pretty smart in this World Series situation, right? Um, one of the guys jumps up to go get the new baby, right? And it's like, oh, she seems fussy. I think she needs to watch the World Series. And so the other men jump up and try to find excuses to leave too, whether it's clearing the table or, you know, whatever. But they all end up getting to watch this pivotal um, game of the World Series. Um, so even though the guys aren't, you know, great at seeing that there's a problem, ironically, they notice dessert plates and the baby and things like that, but, you know, so that they could, could hit their mission of watching that World Series game. Um, so a very different piece of writing than what we saw in the previous one. Again, Dave Barry is a professional writer, so is Susan Britt Jordan. Um, but Dave Barry's kind of in style of writing um, and purpose for writing is very different. So when we look at purpose, um, what do we think the purpose is of this piece? Um, is it to bash his wife or bash men? No, I don't think so. I think that through this contrast, and this is more of a contrast, and remember it's in that alternating point by point format, I think by showing this contrast between women and men, it is not to say that um, all men are this way or all women are this way, and it's not to say that women are better than men or men are better than women. It's more about saying, there are reasons why we're different and that, you know, we need to embrace those differences and actually we can make those work really well in a relationship. You know, for example, in today's world, um, so many couples, both of them work outside the home. And so both of them share you know, the, the task, the, the responsibilities of the home and the child care, if there's children and the cleaning and the laundry in the yard. Um, there are plenty of couples that the woman doesn't even know how to cook. And so she does the yard work because she loves to work outside and he does all the cooking. I have students all the time that say their dad's just this awesome cook or their dad stayed home with them. Um, and their mother went to work. I mean, even in South Texas, it can happen where usually in South Texas, we those stereotypes are, are, are hard and firm when it comes to things. But it's becoming, a society is changing. 
Um, and it's becoming okay for men and women to share the duties, all of them, because both have been at work and come home tired, but there's still all the responsibilities, but also for them to um, work in the areas that they're, they're best at, you know, like Dave Barry's wife obviously is better at cleaning um, bathrooms than he is, um, but he can still, you know, there are still things he can do, and he can still be a, be a big asset, just like there are things that he's better at that, um, so all of this complements each other, so remember this is, a, um, you've got the same two subjects, men and women, um, this is a point by point, um, because one point's addressed like cleaning and men and women are talked about, even though in this one, um, they're talked about and implied through those examples and you kind of piece it together yourself. Um, and it was, you know, those differences between men and women for the purpose of showing that we are different and sometimes we don't mean to not see that. Um, if my husband talks to me about some part we need for something, uh, it's like Charlie Brown's teacher is talking, wah, 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 because I, I have no clue. That's just not my area of expertise. Um, so, you know, couples and families have to find ways to accommodate their strengths and their weaknesses. So that's, that's our short lecture on batting, cleanup, and striking out, which if you look back at that title now, you get that greater meaning, right? Um, and that concludes our discussion of comparison contrast. Thank you for joining me.